Okay, in this video, we're going to show you an alternative to the Yezu 857 LCD uh, replacement um, to cure the, uh, the zebra stripes. I just received this control head from a customer, and uh, he needs uh, to get his radio back on the air. So waiting for the uh, Yezu parts that we've been waiting for for months to come in, with the possibility of not ever coming in, because there are rumors to that effect, I'm going ahead and started to use non-Yezu OEM uh, LCDs for the uh, for the rebuilds of these control heads, and and this video is dedicated to showing you the results of that activity. Okay, when these control heads come in, first thing I do is inspect them. And you can see here that I'm going to show different aspects, different details of this control head and the condition that it looked when it arrived. It was, it's in a, it's in a radio that's used and it's got uh, some dust and dirt and grime on it. And uh, in addition to replacing the LCD, when I do my full refurbishment, all of this gets cleaned up. So at the end result, we'll show you at the very end of this uh, video. Uh, the befores and after on uh, on the different parts of the control head to show just how much better it looks and uh, the fact that it looks to almost new condition. So with that, let's go ahead and start our video and show you the process. So uh, <clears throat> initially what we do is a uh, cleaning of the outside. I won't say thorough cleaning because we're about to take this thing completely apart and go deeper. You can see the rubber ring a rubber tire is most of the white that was on there is gone. It generally takes about two or three passes uh, to get these nice and cleaned up. You can see it's picking up some of the paper towel uh, imprint. I don't know if it, what you want to call it, but it's picking up some of that. <clears throat> but we'll be, uh, we're letting that soak right now. Um, get good and moist. But you can see that a good bit of the uh, dust and so forth that was on this um, is gone, but you can also see that I haven't, this again, initial, you can see that in the crevices, there's still some dust and dirt. We'll, uh, we'll be going deep on those here as we take the shell apart. So, okay, next thing, after we get this part done, the external cleaning, uh, we're going to start disassembly, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so here's the panel. The old panel pulled out of the control head. Um, we got the buttons out of it. Uh, shell casing is there. Next thing we have to do is unsolder the uh, volume control from the panel board. So we'll do that next so that uh, the entire assembly, the two assemblies are free from each other. Okay, so I've got the... Uh, panel pulled away from the housing. The volume control has been unsoldered. I've wicked all the little pins clean so they'll slide right into the new uh, rebuilt, newly rebuilt panel, which I'm going to show you in just a minute here. So uh, now we're going to proceed to clean this shell real good. One of the things I forgot to mention that I already checked was one of the things I checked is to see if the VFO has any in play. This one doesn't. This thing's solid as a rock. So this is uh, this particular uh, encoder, VCO encoder, doesn't need or VFO encoder, I should say, um, doesn't need to have any rework done to it. So it's in good shape. So again, <clears throat> we need another bath here. Obviously, you can see now that it's drying up. You can see that it's still got dust and so forth on it. So we're going to go through another cleaning process here now with. Uh, with the rest of it. Knobs, etc., have all been removed. They're off to the side here. So, uh, cleaning we are. Okay, I was able to prop this guy up so I can hold with my, the phone with my left hand and show you a little bit about how I clean. I use one of these acid brushes. Uh, this thing's trimmed weight. I cut it way down. It's typically much longer than this, almost an inch long. So I get it down to about three eighths of an inch. So it's got some 
stiff bristle and that allows me to get up into the grooves between the clear plastic lens and the body to get that out. Also while the buttons are out, all the openings are available to be cleaned. So I uh, typically I'm scrubbing a lot more vigorously, but again, I'm trying to do this with one hand holding my camera phone and the other one doing the work. But you get the general idea and I just keep doing this until we get everything looking like it should. Get all the old grunk, uh, grime off, fingerprints, skin oils, etc. and get that all taken off of this thing. So, so here's my current inventory of rebuilt front panels. These are old, well old, the used panels that I've taken out of other uh, control heads in the past. I've done probably about four or five hundred control heads over the years. So I've got many, many, many of these. I never, I never got rid of them. I always thought there might come a day where I would need them and so I never got rid of them. These have been rebuilt with the new non Yezu LCDs installed. So we're going to grab this one out of inventory here. Lay it over here by the, uh, let's just lay it off to the side here. Get the bucket out of the way. Okay, so here it is. Plugged in as I mentioned. Turned on as I mentioned. That's what the old display was trying to show. Still see my X in the corner there. Um, this this window here actually matches almost identical that the the, uh, the border you'll see here in a minute almost matches perfectly with the uh, with the clear window here. So yeah, the LCD itself is physically smaller. It's not as wide. Also, it is missing the telltale of the even versus odd number of lines, which apparently the uh, the Yezu was custom. Um, had an odd number of lines where I guess most LE, LCDs in the industry are even numbers of lines. So it's missing that last line, but honestly, who cares? I mean, this looks so much better than what the old one looked like. Obviously, uh, this is definitely an improvement. as I mentioned the uh, that frame that you saw on the panel it's kind of hard because I got a lot of light in here so I'm trying to do this without reflecting light you can see that this display I think it looks fine yes it's missing the bottom stripe but this looks infinitely better than something you can't read and uh, because of the fact the LCD is less expensive than Yezu the Yezu part I'm able to offer these at uh, considerably less than the Yezu uh, repair costs. And uh, frankly, if the Yezu parts ever do come back, I'm probably going to offer this as an option, as a lower cost option uh, for people. Because I, I don't see any reason why this uh, this isn't an acceptable alternative. That, that's actually why I started offering this service. Because... I did, I went through several of these, trying to uh, pick the best ones. This particular one I found to be the best. I've actually contacted and working with, I think I mentioned earlier, the uh, the guy, company engineer um, in China that is making these. I've offered some suggestions. They say they're going to make some changes um, and uh, make it a little bit more... Uh, customer friendly to install these things they're not easy to install so if you don't have the tools don't don't try it you'll you'll just be wasting your money and if you wreck the control head then then, then you're going to have nothing so anyway if you got the tools by all means do it but if you don't don't even think about it so um i guess the question arises okay is there some piece of this functionality that doesn't exist on the uh, uh, on the OEM LCD the answer is yes there is this has a fixed contrast which frankly 
I never changed the contrast. It, it's set it right at about half scale and uh, it's fixed. It looks perfectly crisp and clean as far as, and let me, let me actually get to the display pieces. Uh, and uh, here's this part. As you can see, it is fully compatible with the alternative display that the uh, control head has. So that display mode works fine. All of the functional, uh, like in this particular case, power setting, all of the functions can be changed. This works 100% like the original LCD. And uh, we're only maxed out at 20 watts here because this is the 440 band. Okay, well, that was wonderful. Right in the middle of my uh, explanation of the Y440 band, I got to notice that my uh, memory on my phone was full. So uh, it abruptly cut me off. So I had to go in, free up some disk space and uh, or whatever you have on an iPhone, some memory space. And uh, we're back in business here real quick. Just finishing up. We were pretty close to done anyway. Um, I need to do an extra wipe down, clean up the back panel, which I haven't done yet. Uh, we'll get that all cleaned up, and I'll show you some after pictures here in just a second. Uh, you can see that we got most of this, you know, just little specks of dust here and there that uh, I'm going to try to remove and get the knobs mounted back. And this guy should be... Uh, Good to go back to the customer okay so uh this is pretty close to the end product we'll be ready to ship this back to the customer here uh once we get it all boxed up and so forth but uh some of the things that uh, people have asked me well what about the display itself you know what's the handicap uh basically there isn't one is the uh the fixed contrast in my mind this looks fine I don't see any issue with it whatsoever. It's centered. The frame is centered nicely. Uh, you can see the majority of the uh, outline of the window, which you don't notice till you notice, I guess, is blacked out. So a lot of that uh, extra overhang that the uh, uh, the Azu LCD has is not visible anyway. It's covered by that blacked out frame that's uh, that's in place there. So. Um, let me try to get to the display pieces of the function and uh, show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so here we are at the functions uh, menu having to do with the display. Um, this is the midpoint for the color. And does this LCD change color? Uh, yeah, it, it's really not the LCD has anything to do with the color it's the LEDs that backlight this so I can change the color on this just like I do the Yezu part because again it's the LEDs that backlight this that are changing color not the uh, god it's a horrible blue um, not the uh, not the LCD itself so it's just shining the light just shines through it um, I mentioned contrast. You can set the contrast to anything you want, but it ain't going to change. And, and honestly, that's where it's always set anyway, five. And I don't know why anybody would change a contrast. That doesn't make any sense to me. And then you got the intensity. Does intensity change? Yep, it sure does. Just like, again, that's more a function of the LEDs. That backlight this as opposed to the uh, uh, as opposed to the uh, uh, LCD. So um, this, unlike the cat port one, has all of the functions. I saw, showed you power setting. You know, all of these functions work through the front panel. So I think the bottom line is, if you're willing to uh, to go along with this to get your uh, 857 back on the on the air, um, I have no idea about longevity of these. They haven't been out that long. I haven't had any issues with the ones outside the ones that I initially used and abused to see what I could and couldn't do with them. Now I've got a lot of backlight going on here. 
the all my you see all the reflection off the well lit room here but uh, I don't know zooming in on this thing except my phone is going fuzzy um, this is as crisp as uh, any of the OEM stuff so there it is um, would I have gone to these if the Yezu uh, panels were still available probably not to be honest with you because you know you can't beat OEM but if if Yezu is able to make more then I'll, like I said I'll probably continue to offer these let me do that and keep the glare off I'll probably continue to offer these because I can offer them at a lower cost I don't know what it's been so long since Yezu has produced their panels they were $180 each um if they make more of them, I don't know if it's still going to be $180. Hard to say. Or if they're going to go up. But uh, I think there's not a person watching this that doesn't believe that in light of the 897 going out of production a couple of years ago, uh, Yezu's going to stop making these. Unfortunately. It's just, it's a fact of life. So I think we've got to have an alternative. And uh, I think this is viable. And again, the only thing I can say that for sure as a fact, you can see the bottom of the S and the bottom of the I are missing because that one lowly last stripe is, is not available in an even numbered LCD. So there you go. That's the end of this video. Uh, if you got any questions, call me um, and uh, Look around, I advertise these things on eBay, but frankly, direct is better because I've got to cover about 20% now is what, what it's costing me to, to sell things through eBay. So i got to cover that. And uh, for people who aren't in the any of the ham sites or uh, Facebook sites or any that kind of stuff, uh, that's a way to get to that audience. But if you can find me on Facebook, you can find me in uh, uh, QRZ, QTH, uh, I'm out there. Contact me and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get you taken care of if you need something like this done. Thanks.